this workshop is being run by uh, Cumbria Ecumenical Spirituality Group, but I'm afraid you've been shortchanged. It's just me. Three of our group are um, running a, a day's quiet day for women's women's prayer, and the other two are involved in um, a week of a week of prayer, a guided week of prayer. So you're just stuck with me. Just to say that whatever we're going to do in the next half an hour, there's a lot of resources available, and I've already given those to Dave, and he's going to send them out to you afterwards, including this PowerPoint presentation. So everything is is already for you. So if you don't want to listen anymore, you know what's coming coming to you. I'm going to ask you to use the chat. If you could just do two things for me on the chat. First of all, just to say hello to everybody who's on our breakout room. And secondly, just briefly to say what you're interested in this workshop is. So what are you looking for in the rule of life? Are, are you looking for some guidance, some principles, some ideas, and hopefully you'll get all of that. But if you can just do that, and then when we come to the reflection in a minute, um, I can read through what you've said and hopefully answer all your points. So, so this is what we're going to do. I'm doing the welcome and we're going to have a prayer. Then there's going to be a bit of a chat, but not too long, only about five minutes of what is a rule of life. Then I'm going to give you the chance for a bit of personal reflect, reflection. And then we're going to use the chat and I'm going to bring various people in for a, for a plenary, and then I'm going to tell you the resources that are available, and then hopefully by the end of that, we'll get to the final prayer um, without running over our time. Excellent. So if you like to start using the chat just to say what you're looking for while I begin with our opening prayer, let us pray. God, our Creator, we give you thanks for making us the people that we are. Help us to know that we are loved and in being loved that you abide in us and we abide in you. Lord Jesus Christ, make us faithful as your disciples. We know that in our rule of life, we seek to become better disciples and to follow more truly in your way. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will fill us with all your gifts and bring forth in our lives and in the lives of others your fruits. Help us to discern your will and to follow in your path. Make this prayer in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and sustainer for us this day. Amen. Thank you all very much. I can see your uh, your comments coming in, so I'll have a look at those in a moment. But first of all, I just want to introduce the idea of the rule of life and to begin by reading uh, a definition of the rule of life, which I think is is very good. Many people have very different views of what a rule of life is. But I do like this one from Ray Simpson, which summarizes the desert teaching on the rule of life uh, and pulls out two very important issues for us. So I'm just going to read it for you, but it is there on the screen for you. You're blocking yourself down the right hand side to the zoom. If you go to the top of all the pictures, there is one to, to minimize it and then you, then you won't block the text. Christians follow what they call a rule or a way of life. This sets out the values and goals they choose to make their priority and a checklist suited to their circumstances of practices which help them to live according to their rule. Some Christians argue that they want to be rid of rules and regulations, 
And since no two situations are alike, all they need is the Holy Spirit to guide them. Here is some advice to consider. In a single day, we make so many decisions, we cannot possibly weigh up the good and evil consequences of each decision. We are liable to make foolish and wrong decisions. For this reason, we need a rule, a simple set of moral principles that we can apply to each decision we make. This will not be foolproof, but with a good rule, our decisions will far more often be right than wrong. Another reason for a rule is this. Jesus tells us to pray always, yet sometime we love to devote much time to prayer, whereas at other times we are dry or feel far too busy to pray. A rule prevents us from making excuses. It spurs us to pray at a particular time, even when our heart is cold towards God. The teaching of Jesus must be the primary general guide for any disciple. But Jesus himself did not give rules. The source of a rule is inside your own heart. What we call conscience is a kind of rule which God has written in your heart. Two things then, a rule which actually guides what we do each day and a rule which brings us close to Jesus. And generally, there are three parts to any rule in its broadest sense. It's rooted in scripture, it's rooted in spirituality, and it's rooted in our own personal discipleship. And these three slides just draw out a few of these issues for us. And once we've gone through these three slides, I'm going to ask you to reflect personally over the next five minutes as to scripture, spirituality, and your own personal discipleship. And we'll then come back to them in the plenary. First question when we think of the Bible and your rule is, what are the three most important verses of the Bible to you? Every year when I go on retreat, I do this exercise again. I've been doing it all the, every year since I've been ordained. And so now I have a whole list of Bible readings which have been important to me. And it's very interesting to see how my understanding, my spirituality has changed over those years. And some verses which have been very important to me in the past now are no longer important and new verses become important. Secondly, how do you read the Bible? Not when do you read the Bible, but how do you read it? Do you read it as part of the office? Do you read it with notes? Do you Practice Lectio by soaking yourself in the scripture and letting it speak to you. How we read the Bible is part of our rule just as much as reading the Bible. And to give you an example of what I mean in this section, I pulled out one biblical verse, which for me is crucially important at the moment. It's spoken to me more and more through the current pandemic from 1 Thessalonians, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In a few moments, I'm gonna ask you to find a verse, just to sit in silence for a moment and see what verse comes to you, or perhaps like me, you've been looking at a verse especially during this time of pandemic. There are a great many forms of spirituality which we can relate to, and I've listed some here, but there are other forms of Christian spirituality, ways in which we can 
come to know God in our own lives and ways in which we can follow a form or a rule by a various community. I know many people follow the Northumbrian rule in the county and find great resonance in the um, creation theology at the heart of it. Many people also I know follow the Ignatian way, especially using the examine. Many people use Tese music and readings and prayers in their own way. And we each have our own denominational prayers. Some people use online forums. Whatever way we do, we join together in our fellow Christians in our rule, not just now, but also through the history and development of our church. And then there's our own way of discipleship, which is fed by scripture and fed by spirituality, what I've called personal enriching. There are the people who for us have been Christ in helping us to be nurtured and grow in the faith. For me, silence is hugely important. And I know for many other people, this idea of resting in God. For some people, the arts are very important. I feel very much the loss of singing and music in worship at the moment, and poetry is hugely important to me. Many people are finding it through creative crafting activities. Certainly I've come to appreciate having a garden far more, far more clearly during the pandemic than ever before. Very important for me is embodied discipleship or spirituality, attentive walking, movement is very important. Thin places, those special places where we go to actually feel closest to God. Some people feel that in religious buildings, other people in creation, and yet other people wherever they are. And those personal sim symbols of candles, cross, icons, whatever, are important to us. But I've done enough talking now, so I'm going to hand over to you for the next five minutes and ask you to do these three things. First of all, just choose one biblical passage. Write down the one spiritual practice, whether it's Northumbrian or whatever, that you find helpful. And choose one way in which your life is enriched. So I'll give you five minutes to do that whilst I read what you've written on the chat and then we'll come together for a plenary. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much and thank you for your comments. So I've picked out five main strands for, um, from the comments. Um, can I ask, whilst, whilst we're talking about this, if you have a biblical passage which um, speaks to you, like the one I shared you from 1 Thessalonians, if you could just put that on the chat so we have a record of those biblical passages, that would be very helpful. First of all, if I can go to Morris, um, I can only see a few of you on my screen, but Morris, if you would like to unmute yourself, you put in a comment about how the rule of life relates to uh, mission and discipleship. Do you want to just say a bit more about that? Hi. Uh, it particularly came out of the work that we were doing in my previous diocese with uh, 20s to 30s um, and found that they were quite interested in having something um, methodical bound in with accountability. Yeah. Um, and so a number of the churches had started uh, rules of life. They were all quite different to each other. Yeah. Um, and I just wondered whether there was any real pro... I've been over here now for 18, nearly 18 months, and I didn't know whether that uh, momentum, if you like, had been continued or not, um, and how they were integrating. So I noticed somebody's put on the bottom here that uh, the phrase rule of life didn't go down well with some and I can understand that um, but I just wanted to know whether anybody had picked up anything uh, about that general 
development because th there was quite a lot of talk about it about 18 months ago but i've been out of the loop since then yeah does that help yes thank you morris uh, the... and, and, and it's also i think um it's it's trying to tie in uh evangelism and discipleship together so that you you, you don't do evangelism and they come to faith and then start discipleship you, you do it all as part of the same sort of journey yeah. um and what whether that had been incorporated at all uh whether anybody's done any any work on that yeah i mean as far as i'm aware there's quite a lot of work being, being done across um the churches on this and one of the things that we're hoping that the rule of life group as part of the Re vision refresh will do will actually link all that in together. I'd like to bring in Peter Powell, who put a comment which I think relates to this um, about developing a personal pattern. Peter, do you, do you want to say something about that um, to everybody? Yeah, yes, that's fine. Um, I, I think that um, one of the, uh, the great gifts that I had during my um, training at Murfield was just entering into that um, monastic pattern of life and in a way um, the BCP offered the people of this country that monastic pattern uh, to everybody uh, at that time and I think it's very interesting that we are probably beginning to rediscover just how important that personal pattern of prayer is and I think that there's lots of uh, words being published in that area and lots of interest in a new monasticism and in pilgrimage and in kind of just just having that personal pattern of prayer through the day that actually just grounds you and and sets you with a framework to to just see where god is throughout throughout that time thank you very much peter uh janet can, can i bring you in you put on the chat that um, you're looking for rule of life or way of life to, to inspire others. Could you, could you say a bit about that? Uh, yeah, I, and I guess this has been a, um, something that's, that's challenged me for a long time in ministry. Um, a way in which to help other people see how they could to, to want to grow their personal discipleship um, and how, how following a rule of life can assist them with that process. Um, not just, you know, in their personal discipleship, but also as a, as a, a Christian community together, something that, you know, we can share um, and encourage one another. Um, the word accountability you used earlier as well. Yes. Um, as a Methodist, um, the whole kind of class system and band system was very important to early Methodists, and we've lost that yes. along the way. Uh, and I think for a long time it's perplexed me as to how we can um, encourage people back onto that path. And so I'm delighted that this whole area has come into the fore, really, with the Vision Refresh. Yeah, and it's one of the things that's very noticeable in the kind of new monastic groups like Iona, Northumbria, and, yeah. and the kind of work that some of you may be familiar with that Ian Mosby's um, doing in London uh, amongst 20-year-olds 20, 20 of actually um, not only a rule of life, but a rule of life where people have to be accountable to each other for how they live as Christ's disciples. I think that is can be supportive as well as challenging. So thank, thank you for that, Janet. I'd like to bring in Mike Talbot at this point. Mike, um, you've, you've um, linked in the rule of life to following daily in the Vision Refresh. Do you want to just say something about that, Mike? Because uh, uh, that's helpful. Uh, yes, thank you. It's, it's because I'm um, enabling the, the group that's looking at following daily and considering what that means for us. Uh, and it seems to me the two are inextricably interlinked, that unless we have a living faith, we can't grow as disciples. And therefore, how can we embed a rule of life within following daily, out of which everything else will flow? Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you for all your comments and thank you for the, um, the biblical references. I mean, they are enormously helpful and I will put all those together and send those to Dave as well. So we've got those uh, as a record. 
I'm going to start sharing my screen again because there are a lot of you are asking for guidance and for examples um, of a rule of life. So I've just got some share um, slides to share with you about the various things which which are available. So I will just get that up again for you.